these works here you see here, they were painted in 2017. They have to do with the universe and they have to do with landforms as well as the heavens. And I am sort of thrilled and excited to understand what's up there in the heavens. And I'm not the only one. Scientists do the same thing too. And they have found when they're looking at the moon that there's a dark side and there's a lighter side. For the moon is all dark, but it draws its light from the sun. So what happens is that I said, okay, I'm going to challenge that. I am going to do the other side of the moon. And they have craters on the moon. And then another part, they don't have craters. They're sort of um, smooth-like because of the lava. So I tried to figure out uh, what could I do. And so I started doing these designs. One, two, three. All of these are done on glass. I throw the paint on the glass, and I sort of figure out how I want the paint to run. I not only created these three works, and those four works, those in the wall and those over there, but I created them so that you feel tension. And I try to do that by line and balance and color. I know everybody doesn't like this kind of abstract art. So I try to do something that they could relate to in time and space, something that they say, oh, that looks like something I know. Now, for the rest of the work, they're actually collages. You put pieces of paper together. Actually, those pieces had nothing to do with this. But when I was doing that, I said, wait a second. It's pieces going together. Although they're collages, they're interacting. So I put them all together. So this here, and then those over there, in the walls against the wall, those are the same things but a different state. I got inspired to do photography way back in middle school when I was given a manual adjustable camera that we call the twin lens reflex. They don't really make them anymore, but uh, it was a lot of fun and it uh, got me to put together a home darkroom and I was off and running. And once the digital world began, I sort of transitioned over and that was a help because um, I have trouble seeing things in focus because I don't have the greatest eyesight and you know with these new digital cameras they kind of focus for you. Even so I sometimes had trouble seeing things through the viewfinder so several years ago I hit upon this idea of trying to capture the energy of an image and its motion rather than its specific outlines and so I started taking some really long exposures and, and the ones along this wall range between one and 20 seconds and the outlines of the subject soften when I do that and it, it shows some of the some of the motion that's not the only type of photography I do the ones around the corner um, are reflection photographs a different technique and I also take some purely conventional straight photographs although I like try to take a you know maybe an unconventional approach to the subject matter and then if it's still too bright for a long exposure I use a, a darkening filter in front of the lens. Generally I just hand hold it and let the natural motion of my body you know it sort of plays sort of a random role in this and then I look at what the results are. I take photography seriously but I don't take my own photography too seriously. I try to you know create a little playfulness and I hope that comes out here. I'm inspired by women, women in very vulnerable situation. All of those pieces address the whole issue, which is just women are often victims in war, and they don't have any power. They're, we're the most powerless. We don't have power because we don't usually carry around weapons or anything like that. We're just trying to take care of our families or, you know, secure the home or whatever. I started out as a painter, and so I found the faces and I made them into sort of a graphic design so that they could be less personal and not so, so kind of protect their identity and their privacy, but I would still know who they were. Um, and so I painted that on transparent mylar, uh, and I also used steel and acrylic. And uh, some of the things that I've done in the work, for instance, I've made shapes that are like nests. And so the nest is a symbol of feminine power for rebirth. I wanted to show that, one, their vulnerability, but two, their own strength, their internal strength, their, their resilience. Just, you know, they're not just victims anymore, that I wanted to give them some kind of internal power. 
Um, and also I use the word the, cir the shape of the circle, which is kind of a shows the individual and it also shows the whole. And in this respect, I'm thinking we have to take care of all of humanity. We can't just we have to stop the violence. <laughs> the sunset was just perfect, and I said, no, we have to stop here. So I'm in the middle of nowhere, pull over, and I have to get my wife knows the drill now. I get out with my camera and the way I work. This is actually a picture of maybe 30 different photographs bumped together in Photoshop. That's the way I do it. So I have to chunk, ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. So it takes me maybe five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to photograph a single object. I saw a book with 20 or 30 of these works by David Hockney and I fell in love with it. And I said, I want to try doing that. So for the past seven or eight years, that's what I've been doing. All my photography is collages of many photographs put together on a single backing board. And then later, now I, I do it all entirely in Photoshop. I work in fused glass, kiln form glass. Um, it's not blown glass. It's a little different process where you're cutting and shaping and forming the glass and then fusing it in a kiln. One like this, which is fairly complex, takes me days of cutting and assembling the piece and then it takes one, two, sometimes three different firings in the kiln and each firing takes usually overnight. So it's got to go to 1,480 degrees Fahrenheit, so good temperature. And because it's glass, it can't accept s um, sharp changes in temperature, so it's got to heat up slowly and it's got to cool slowly. I cut and shape and assemble the glass onto the sheet and then it's fused in the kiln. So I'm not actually working in the kiln. It, it just, all the design takes place beforehand, gets fired. Sometimes when it comes out, I add to it and fire it again. A couple of years ago, I was out in New Mexico and traveling around and I got to see some of the natural sites and a little more familiarity with the local culture, Native American culture, some of the symbolism. And I just started working with all those ideas at once, the, the symbolism of more or less a sunset or a, a sun symbol and radiating out using the colors of the sunset. Uh, and it, the technique is called tapestry. So if you look closely, it looks like the, the pieces are going over and under and over and under. Initially, I had been doing silversmithing, and I saw somebody wearing a glass pendant, similar to what I have on, and I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I could incorporate my silver and glass, but once I got started in the glass, I discovered a medium that I just couldn't stop working in.